malignant mesothelioma, thoracic masterclass. In this lecture we will discuss causes, presentation, diagnosis, and the different treatment modalities for this dismal tumor. Mesothelioma is an aggressive cancer of the pleural surfaces. It is associated with the previous asbestos exposure, with a latency period of more than 40 years, between fibers exposure and disease presentation. Global incidence has risen steadily over the past decade and is predicted to continue to an estimate peak in 2020 of 14,000 cases per year worldwide. Prognosis of malignant pleural mesothelioma is poor and the median survival range from 8 to 14 months from diagnosis. Women have a more favorable outlook than men, but due to the occupational nature of the disease, there is a male predominance of 4 to 1. Pathogenesis Asbestos is a naturally occurring silicate minerals and there are two main types, chrysolite, or white asbestos, the curly serpentine fibers, and amphibole, asbestos needle-like fibers, this is further divided into other types including, crocidolite, or blue asbestos, amosite, or brown asbestos, and anthrophilite all of which are responsible for asbestos-related illness, other types actinolite, and tremolite. Mesothelioma is classified as an occupational disease, since asbestos exposure occur mainly in the workplace, however, peri-occupational exposure can occur, for instance in the wives of asbestos workers who launder their clothes, other causes include, chest wall radiation, and semian virus 40. Inhaled asbestos fibers, migrates to the pleura, causes irritation and tissue damage, intracellular DNA damage, and abnormal repair, asbestos, Exposed mesothelial cells release inflammatory mediators, increased expression of proto-oncogenes, and further promotion of abnormal cellular proliferation. Clinical presentation, asymptomatic, discovered during routine chest X-ray, symptomatic and this includes, dry cough, shortness of breath, pleuritic chest pain, fatigue, anorexia, weight loss, and malaise. Factors associated with poor prognosis, and include, male gender, old age, poor general performance, chest pain and shortness of breath, leukocytosis, thrombocytopenia, anemia, high LDH, and sarcomatous pathology. Investigations, chest X-ray, the typical findings include, pleural effusion, loss of volume, nodular pleural thickening, irregular fissure thickening, or a localized mass lesion, the presence of pleural plaques may alert the clinician, to prior asbestos exposure, even in the absence of known exposures, however, chest radiography appearance are generally insensitive and non-specific, and further imaging is usually required. Thoracentesis and fluid analysis. Pleural fluid is an exudate with a protein content more than 3 grams per cent, limited inflammatory cells, but rich in mesothelial cells. Pleural fluid LDH usually more than 600 international units per liters. Lymphocytosis, the presence of low pH and glucose level denote poor prognosis, and expected failure of pleurodesis, cytology is positive in only 30% of cases. Ultrasonography, features of pleural malignancy include, pleural mass lesions, pleural thickening more than 1 cm, nodular thickening in the pleura, and diaphragm. CT, and PET scan, features of malignant mesothelioma include, pleural enhancement, infiltration of the chest wall, mediastinum, and or diaphragm, nodular, or mediastinal pleural thickening, and interloper fish nodularity, PET, which can provides, more information of lymph nodes, and extra thoracic metastatic lesions helping staging. MRI scan, better than the CT scan to assess invasion of the diaphragm, endothoracic fascia, and chest wall. Biasy, cytology is negative in many cases, and sonar, or CT guided biasy is helpful, Video-assisted thoracoscopy and mediastinoscopy are a better choice for diagnosis and helpful in staging for selecting patients for surgical option. There are three pathological types of mesothelioma, epithelial, sarcomatous, and biphasic. Sarcomatoid type has the worst prognosis, with median survival not exceeding four months. On the other hand, epithelial pathology has a favorable prognosis with a median survival around 13 months. Pathological differentiation between mesothelioma and adenocarcinoma, PAS, and mucicamine stains are positive with adenocarcinoma, immunostaining, shows positive vimentin, and cytokeratin in mesothelioma, while CEA and LUM1 is positive in adenocarcinoma.
Serum marker, soluble form of protein mesophilin, found in normal mesothelial cells, mesothelitimus, and ovarian cancer is used as an adjunctive role in diagnosis and screening of high-risk group. Staging of mesothelioma, the International Mesothelioma Interest Group, IMIG, the staging depends on pleural involvement, invasion, regional lymph nodes, and distant metastasis. Management of mesothelioma, there is no curative treatment for malignant pleural mesothelioma. Systemic treatment options includes chemotherapy, targeted therapy, and radiotherapy. Surgery is controversial and limited to patients with early stage disease and good functional status. Positive care and symptom management are essential. Control of pleural effusion may need long term indwelling catheters. Chemotherapy, it is the only treatment modality that has been shown to improve survival, and on the basis of medical trials, Pemetrex was approved for use in combination with cisplatin for malignant pleural mesothelioma. Median survival however is only 12 to 13 months, finally the best second-line agent is unknown. Targeted therapy, bevacizumab, antivascular endothelial growth factor, monoclonal antibody, has been shown to be effective in mesothelioma. Multicentric Phase 3 MAPS trial randomized patients to receive cisplatin, pemetrexed, with or without bevacizum. There is it shown significantly longer median overall survival of 18 months compared to those who did not receive bevacizumab. Radiotherapy, it has been used in two main settings in mesothelioma, as a palliative measure to treat symptoms, or as a part in the context of tree modality treatment. In the palliative setting, it can be used to reduce tumor bulk and relieve symptoms, particularly chest wall invasion, nerve root involvement, and pain. It has been used prophylactically to prevent subcutaneous metastasis along procedures tracts. Surgery, it may play a different role according to the stage and performance of the patient and this may include diagnosis, staging, pleurodesis, palliative debarking, extensive sitoreductive, with or without, hypothermic intrapleural, chemotherapy, pleurectomy, Decortication, curative resection of the pleura, is usually not possible as most patients are not suitable for radical intent. On the other hand, palliative pleurectomy, with limited resection of parietal and visceral pleura is mostly practiced, with intent to control pain, effusion, or debulking. This can be achieved through either open or video-assisted thoracoscope approaches. Extrapleural pneumonectomy, remove all macroscopic tumor from the chest by resecting the pleura, lung, pericardium, diaphragm, and regional lymph nodes, published results, show improved survival for patients with epithelial type, and limited lymph nodes affection, however, a high 30 days mortality, and morbidity favored pleurectomy decortication over this procedure, except in high volume specialized centers. Pleurectomy decortication versus extrapleural pneumonectomy, pleurectomy aims at, fully expanded lung, palliation, or cure, and removal of gross tumors, the median survival following the procedure is in the range of 5 to 17 months, with the morbidity up to 22%, and mortality from 0 to 7.8%. On the other hand, extrapleural pneumonectomy aims at radical and block tumor removal, the median survival after the procedure ranges from 10 to 14 months, with a morbidity up to 60%, and mortality up to 30%. Sitoreductive surgery and hypothermic intrapleural chemotherapy. The concept is to perform sitoreductive surgery, followed by intrapleural chemoperfusion to sterilize microscopic residual disease. After surgery, cisplatin, at a dose of 120 mg per meter square for 60 minutes, and hypothermic conditions, a temperature of 42 degrees, was found to penetrate the lungs for a depth of 3 to 4 mm increases capacity to destroy cancer cells, through increased permeability, cytotoxicity, and penetration. Studies showed that those who received hypothermic chemoperfusion, reported longer interval to recurrence, 27 versus 13 months. Trimodality therapy, the Mars trail concluded that, due to high morbidity, associated with extrapleural pneumonectomy, and absence of large feasible studies, Radical extrapleural pneumonectomy conferred no survival benefits, and possible harms patients. Therefore, there is a growing evidence among surgeons that pleurectomy can offer reasonable debulking procedures, yet, longer survival compared to chemotherapy alone, needs to be verified by randomized controlled trials. 
Palliative care is it an essential step in the management of patients with mesothelioma. Radimia's studies show that early palliative care improves quality of life and survival of these patients. Palliation includes shortness of breath, chest pain, cough, nutrition, shortness of breath. During the early stage of the disease, it is due to pleural effusion, however, in late stages, it denotes either chest wall and or lung entrapment. Management entails early pleural fluid drainage and pleurodesis, however in recurrent pleural effusion, long-term indwelling catheters are used, the sustained morphine or codeine may be used to reduce as the intensity of breathlessness. Chest pain may be dull and diffuse or pleuritic due to invasion of parietal pleura, neuropathic, or bony when invasion to the intercostal nerves or ribs occur, the referral to pain clinic for medical or neuroblative techniques may be requested, however, palliative radiotherapy may be also indicated in this context. Cough, insomnia, and fatigue, medication should be used to ameliorate insomnia and cough, chemoresponsive patients show amelioration of their symptoms, however, central antitussives, such as codeine, and extramethorphan, or peripheral acting antitussive, such as levodropropylene can be used to improve symptoms. Conclusion Currently, the management for treating malignant mesothelioma is palliative aiming at improving quality of life and control symptoms. To date, still the outcome and survival are very poor.